All right, I had a designer send me this model that they needed to start from, and they wanted to model it in Fusion 360 and have me critique how they built it and give them some feedback. So let's run through this. All right, let's look at how they did it. So first, looks like starting with a sketch, top plane, grabbing a center rectangle. And this is cool because you can connect it to the origin and it sketches a little faster for you that way. I like that. He's adding the smart dimensions. Okay, drawing a line, so a construction line, and then dropping in the first circle and then adding the smart dimensions um, off the origin and off the corner here. If that's the values you know, that's great. And then the diameter. Okay. Now, sketch mirror. Okay, cool. So he's trying to take use of symmetry with the sketch so that he's got, um, you know, using this construction line in the middle to make that one and then a construction line here to make these two. That's awesome. What's cool is if he changes this, these will update and move with it. That's smart. If it's not going to be a symmetrical part with the holes, the holes are all over the place, then go ahead and dimension them, right? Um, it's using the sketch circle offset looks good sketching a circle in the middle at the center he's doing a really good job of dimensioning so question comes up do you have to keep do you have to do all these dimensions and constraints when you're just designing something for the first time and you just want to build a concept you definitely don't you don't have to Fusion 360 does not need all these dimensions and constraints, but it makes editing down the road so much easier. And if you're trying to build something off of a blueprint or off of a manufactured drawing or 2D drawing, whatever, then dimensions constraints are huge. They're very important for building something very accurately. So this is a great, great practice. Let's try how I try to model as well so that I can edit this stuff faster in the future. Okay, so he's dropping in the dimensions. So there's a lot of sketching here. Um, if you're looking for some, some more sketch tips, be sure to check out my 44 sketch tips video. I'll link that up here uh, right now. Okay, so I love it, it's fully defined, but he sketched all of this, or almost the whole part all in one. So he's kind of defining it almost as a layout or a total sketch. And this is cool from the sense that you can edit everything faster this way. It's all connected in one sketch. And he's extruding just the plate first. And now he wants to, I think there was a, a groove in the back, so he's gonna sketch half of that and then a center line and mirror it. You could just sketch this out, add some constraints, or you could mirror half, kind of, I'd say it's about, about the same either way. But he's very good about mirroring everything, I love that. And now, you notice he didn't even draw that bottom line, you don't have to, that's cool. Fusion 360 is intelligent that it knows to use this profile anyways. It's reusing that bottom edge. Now here's a here's an interesting one. He did the extrude up to an object, up to this face. And that's great, that works. The only challenge is if this face changes based on the original design. So say you extrude and do something else here, or the extrude changes, the face changes, and then sometimes it loses its reference. So a simpler option would be just be a through all cut. That'd be maybe maybe even a better way to do it, if it always goes through. Okay, next, uh, looks like adding some fillets. He could do his fillets later. He could do them all at the end if you want to get, um, you know, really critical. But this is great. I'm glad he's, that's cool. The solid fillets is smart so that um, you can add those and edit those easy on the in the design tree. 
and then he's using this center circle. And here's one, an interesting one. That center circle is at the bottom, yet he is um, starting the extrude up here. How does he do that? And that is in the design here, kind of jump through it kind of quickly, he's starting from an object. So he's selecting maybe this top face as the start for this next extrude. Cool, so he's gonna extrude from the top here, place that in, put the distance in. So it started there and extruded from. So that's a cool, maybe a little bit more advanced technique, just being able to start from an object. I love using that, except I've had Fusion 360 fail to solve sometimes when I'm doing these from objects. So, um, and then editing in the future can be a little tricky or if someone else is trying to figure out what you did, that can be a little bit harder to follow, but that's kind of the best way to do maybe when you're trying to work from a layout sketch. Or we could, I guess, copy paste that into a new sketch up on a plane, but yeah, I like how he's done it. And then he does this, uh, joint area here. Then he does the port extruding from that face. Very cool. Shelling this out. Okay. So is he going to at three millimeters? He's showing the whole thing. Okay. So here's one thing that's, I might be a gotcha down below is that hollowed out area. I don't know that that's the design that it's meant to you know, flow into this base. It might actually have been intended to flow out through a hole into another component. Then that makes more sense. So it not sure on the design here, if that's really what was intended or not, but shelled it all out in uniform thickness. Okay, so now he needs to do that uh, rounded kind of the, the curve at the top. So he's sketching what looks to be the path of a sweep. So he's gonna sketch the lines and then add the angles and maybe he needs to round that off with like a fillet. He's dragged it lower, so it starts lower. Okay. So let's look at that. So he's got, it's fully defined, great job and it starts a little low, and that's the elbow path, right, for the sweep, very cool. And then uh, he needs to sketch the profile or cross-section that's gonna be the sweep. Okay, so he's maybe gonna reuse one of the circles from down below. You can hit P for project, and that would redraw that same circle up above, and then he's offsetting it to get a different value, okay. Great, so you now can use these for his sweep and he actually can do a a pipe or uh you know just that profile without a hole or with the hole he can do it either way so it looks like he's doing it solid interesting so he's doing the whole thing joining it all together so it's hollowed out in the middle but then it's got this solid on top so he needs to remove that and it looks like he's going to use a cut and that's where he's using that uh, indent. Let's go back to it real quick. Right there. So that's why he set it down low so that he could come in and cut that out and create that uh, flow through there. That's cool. Okay, he just checks the cross section. Great. So this is looking good. Now, if we need a, a different thicknesses at this hose or at this curve, that's where maybe we can come in and do an extruded cut, cut that out, um, or do even a sweep cut and do maybe a few different ones so that we get the different uh, thicknesses inside. So this curve actually does have different thicknesses. I think that's what he's setting up here is this sweep where he takes right, this section along this path. Great. Yep, so that's the first cutout, and then he's going to do the, the second. I think that was all the way through the bend, and this one will be the, the shallower part, so he's only sweeping part of it. Great, and if we look at the cross-section, yeah, cool. So you can see that it's uniform thickness throughout, but then this right here is thicker from when he cut it. So he did the sweep, and he cut this out. 
you know, maybe that's the first swip cut. He then cut this out a little more and then he cut this out the thinnest. So that's a cool way to do multiple thicknesses there. Looking great. And then let's see here. Okay, so next he's gonna create that uh, polygon where um, at the end here, and he drew a few circles, reference circles. You can do an inscribed circle, so he could have just drawn one and then dimension this. Shouldn't have to do multiple circles there. And then add a constraint, make something horizontal, or you know, get something constrained that way. This looks good. He needs to extrude it, but he needs to offset it a little bit. So you actually, he's gonna again start with an offset. Uh, he's gonna start it in five millimeters. That's cool, it's a smart way to do it without having to create an additional plane. So that's smart. Looking great. Okay, and then finishing out with the fillets at the end. That's cool. Um, since he is gonna shell it, it's cool that he put those holes in and then shell that out if the base plate's supposed to be shelled. So, very cool. The chamfers, something to be aware of. I guess you could have used the hole command in Fusion 360 to do standard size holes and save himself some time. 